Um, to answer your question, I do think it's hard to maintain a, a luxury car in these type of conditions uh, in the Rocky Mountains. You know, when it starts snowing and the roads get a little slippery and you're going to have to put your car in different gears to go through the snow, I feel like sometimes it's most likely to damage your car in certain ways and your car is more accessible to get dirt on it, which you don't want. Yeah, crazy story that happened to me. It was like a couple months ago. It was snowing heavily. Uh, I think it was like a little snowstorm. I was driving this exact car, and obviously during the snow, the roads get slippery. So, you know, I, I'm driving at least 20 miles per hour, none too fast, none too crazy. You know, just driving. And it's like the car in front of me hit the brakes like super fast, super quick. And I was about like, you know, a couple meters behind them. But when I hit my brakes, Next, you know, I just start sliding across the road, like just gliding, and I lost control. Then I hit, and I hit a curb, and then next thing you know, I got a big flat on the driver's side tire. And next thing you know, I'm driving with a flat tire, and it was the worst experience I ever dealt with on the road for sure. <laughs> I just, I just think driving the snow is like the worst thing ever. Like, I wouldn't wish that on nobody because you don't know when you're accessible to slide in, slip in. The road's so icy, man, and you don't know when to hit your brake at the right time. But luckily, through my experience here, I learned over time how to drive through the snow, you know, and be safe through it. But uh, I say my first couple years, like my first two years here, I was, I was damn near like dreading to drive in the snow. When uh, Coach Saban retired, I wasn't as surprised because, you know, obviously, you know, there's always a time when things end. You know, all good things come to end. I and mean, I knew he was getting to a point where, you know, he's accomplished everything. You know, he's the most decorated coach in all of college sports, I believe. You know, when you see a guy like that retire, it's obviously like a big blow, a big loss, obviously to the Alabama program, but I think when you look back at, you know, all the things he's done, man, all the awards, all the championships, um, I think it was about his time to go, you know, and leave his legacy behind. And, you know, his legacy gonna go on forever. I just think the impact he had on those kids towards Alabama, um, it was a huge impact. His impact is life lasting. So um, I wasn't as surprised by it as others may have been. You know, I just think that it was his time to, you know, leave his legacy behind him. I think the most memorable moment I've had with him is my junior year. Uh, we just finished beating Georgia. And, you know, uh, Saban, he's, you know, his personality, you know, speaks for itself. You know, he's just very, you know, on the things, you know, very on schedule. You know, his demeanor never changes. But when we won that game, everybody was happy. Everybody was enjoying themselves, dancing in the locker room. The next thing you know, I see Saban get in the middle um, of the team and just start dancing and having fun. And I just never seen him break character like that. And I think that was like one of my most memorable experiences with him because, you know, not only just seeing him happy, but I feel like being around, you know, us, you know, being around that whole football culture um, was his moment of happiness and where he was able to enjoy it so for sure. Yeah, I think the number one thing I learned from him was you know, obviously success speaks for itself, but complacency, you know, never get complacent. Always stay at it in your craft. Never lose track, never lose focus of your goals. I think that was the main thing with him, you know, just focusing on that and him being able to instill that into us just to chase greatness and to chase perfection. Even though we're not perfect, but to chase perfection, that's what he's always preached about. And, uh, you know, Whatever Coach Saban said, everybody listen. And, you know, I got a whole bunch of quotes that he said, but the main thing was to stay diligent in your craft and to always never be complacent. That's one thing I'll take with me. Yeah, NIL, I don't think it's ruining college football to say, but I say the main thing is I feel like it's ruining the motivation to reach to the next step, I could say. You know, obviously, you know, when you, when you, play football for a certain amount of time obviously you want to get paid and you know I feel like they shall get paid you know they shall get paid for their performance and what they do on the field but I feel like 
it sort of makes them lose track, you know, on the goal that they always wanted to accomplish. And, and that's to, you know, make it to the NFL and make even more money than what they've made in college. But I say, I say they see too much of the fame before they actually, you know, get to get developed in a way before they able to reach their full potential. Um, but I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, discredit them. I believe they should earn as much money as they need to because obviously, you know, majority of these kids, you know, try to feed their families. And, uh, you know, I just think the money that they earn, they shall be able to make that money in college. But I just think once you make a certain amount of money, I feel like over the course of time, your head get big, big a little bit and you sort of lose your motivation for success. And now it's different with the NIL because the transfer portal booming. You know, you see kids in the transfer portal every day. And you know, now it's different because teams are able to negotiate, you know, with the player rather than back before. Like, if you transfer, you just there and uh, to work and just to put your grit and hard work um, towards the program. But now it's like so much involved with money. I don't know how much motivation plays into it, you know. I love Denver. I love the city of Denver, what the city has to offer, um, you know, just everything about it. Obviously, a kid coming from Florida out to here, I didn't know what to expect, but um, I've grown accustomed um, living here, uh, being around the culture here in the city of Denver. Um, obviously, as far as the future goes, um, I would love to be here, but obviously, you know, towards the business side of things, you know, who knows, um, you know what I mean? Cause you would, you would love to stay here, you know, for the rest of your career, but you know, sometimes business uh, defers that. But, you know, at the end of the day, I love the city, the community as a whole, and I love playing for the Broncos.